you have to be really intentional about, about putting a team together. I was in! Crawled out of the pile and just started screaming. How good is Joey Bosa? Herbert, rolling, looking, throwing, end zone, touchdown! It's intercepted, Derwin James! Derwin was there with you got to be on a mission every day in the NFL. But even more than that, you got to be on a mission together. Great hands! Keenan Allen! The Los Angeles Chargers select Rashawn Slater. Asante Samuel Jr. That was Stop! Oh, I'm stopping y'all boys. I can't get it. Intercepted! Picked off by Michael Davis. Explosion. Explosiveness from Eckler. There's Murphy. Boy, he blew that up, didn't he? It is picked off. Nasir Adderley. 50-50 ball is 100%. Mike Williams. Ojeda Nwosu. And that will end it. Time to bolt up. Welcome to another episode of Chargers Unleashed. Dan Walkenstein and Jake Heffer from the LA Football Network here with you today. You can find us on Instagram, on Facebook, and on Twitter at LAC underscore Unleashed. If you're looking for year-round Chargers content, special guest episodes, be sure to follow Chargers Unleashed on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe wherever you find your podcast. This episode is brought to you by Brewery X, USC Fit and Temecula, as well as Charger Bolt Family. If this is your first time tuning in, welcome and thank you for checking us out. We just beat the Kansas City Chiefs in the Arrowhead. Now we've got a primetime matchup versus the Raiders. Figured it'd be a good time to bring in a special guest who knows a thing or two about these division rivals. Host of your Chargers Weekly and Final Drive of the Chargers Podcast Network, Chargers team reporter, new girl dad to beautiful twin girls, friend of the show, Mr. Chris Harry joins us on Chargers Unleashed. Chris, welcome to the show. How you doing, man? Dan, I appreciate it, buddy. I'm doing great. Um, excited for Monday night. I'll tell you that. This is a, it's fun when Chargers Raiders really mean something, and I know it's early in the season, but 3-0, and 2-1, and one, um, a huge win for the Chargers Sunday, but it doesn't mean as much if you don't take care of business on Monday. So excited to see this thing unfold. Yeah, absolutely. Me too. And we're getting into both what just happened last week against the Chiefs and Arrowhead, as well as this upcoming matchup versus the Las Vegas Raiders. But again, congrats to you and your family. And I, I got to say, how's it feel? Overnight, you and Sully are now outnumbered. <laughs> How are things over at the household recently? <laughs> Everything is great, man. I, I couldn't be happier um it's just it's an amazing feeling it's been an awesome uh 10 days or so and uh just kind of <laughs> like floating on on cloud nine right now running on adrenaline i'll say that but it's it's been in a, an amazing you know 10 days and um I, i'm excited to get back out there and, and start covering this team and in in the nfl again but uh it's been a it's been an amazing 10 days man not much more else to say I did see the Chargers did something really cool where they put the names up and for you guys up on the infinity board after the game. That was that was yeah. super super yeah, cool. Yeah, classy man. Very <laughs> very classy of of the of the guys in the control room. Shout out to Pete and Sean for doing that. And uh yeah, man, it's you know it I, I had my suit all ready to go on Sunday uh for, for Cowboys. <laughs> and uh the girls had other ideas. What can I say? So I, I I'm I'm really excited about Monday night because the, the place is going to be rocking. It, it's a division game. Uh, Chargers 1-0 for the first time in the division since 2014. Uh, an opportunity to go 2-0 and for the first time since 2012, I believe. So, you know, those wins at the end of the year, they were great for momentum, but they were kind of empty wins, right? Because, you know, playoffs were not a possibility. <laughs> it's good to start off on, on the right foot in the division. And, and to get another one, to stack it on top of this Chiefs one would be really sweet for the Chargers. Yeah, and we'll, we'll talk about both. Let's get into it. So the, the game against the Chiefs real fast. Uh, Chiefs coming off a loss to the Ravens. It feels like there may have been a little bit of a blueprint, a blueprint on how to beat the Chiefs. Were, were you surprised by how that game turned out? Like, does that shock you that the Chargers came out of there with a the victory? It doesn't shock me that they would come out with a victory because we've seen how tight they've played this team, you know, in the past few years. Um, I, I think what shocked me was just the fact that they were able to get four turnovers and, and to go back to back to back in the first half um, and to have Justin play as well as he did on the road, four touchdowns, no picks. It, it's, it's really, it, it's such a cliche when we're like, Hey, play clean football. Right. But it means so much to, to play clean football. The Chargers needed every single one of those turnovers and they couldn't afford 
to give one away, and they didn't do it, right? So, so Justin played remarkable. Um, I thought Mike Williams was remarkable again in Kansas City, uh, kind of flashes of 2018, but we're just seeing Mike do this more consistently now this year, which has been awesome to see. And if Mike's going to play at this clip, and you have Keenan Allen on the other side, good luck trying to figure out who to double, right? It, it, you're not going to be able to do that. And that's going to probably open up opportunities for guys like Jalen Guyton and Jared Cook and Austin Eckler coming out of the backfield. So um, I, I was just impressed all around with the win and really just the, the confidence of Brandon Staley to kind of say, hey, this is how we're going to do it. This is how we're going to beat the Chiefs. And for the guys to execute that game plan to a T was, was pretty special for them. Yeah, and you mentioned it. Justin Herbert balled out four touchdowns, no interceptions. You heard a lot of folks talking about the potential of a sophomore slump. Uh, I would say three games in, fans in the stands. I think we could put that to rest now, huh? Yeah, there's no sophomore slump with 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 Justin. He's he's just the real deal, man. He he's so cool and calm under pressure. I think everybody, even last year, you look at last year, it was this this COVID year where nobody was in the stands. So he's going down to the Superdome and throwing four touchdowns, but it's it's an empty Superdome. So you're like, all right, how is he going to respond when he's in a deafening environment? And you want to talk about deafening environment, at Arrowhead Stadium in September when they never lose. Um, for him to go in there and, and really I, what, what I loved about how they won is they – we're kind of playing on their terms, right? Like they were, they were doing things that you would see maybe the chiefs do. Um, mm-hmm. They were going for it on fourth down. They were playing aggressive. Um, they were getting the football. Um, they were very opportunistic with the football and to have guys step up, right? Chris Harris Jr. Didn't play in this game. Tavon Campbell steps up and forces two fumbles. If he doesn't do that in the first half, I'm not sure the chargers win that game. Right? So you're, you're seeing some of these younger guys in the secondary um, start to to show what they can do on the field. Asante Samuel Jr., uh, defensive rookie of the month. And, and Brandon Stanley talked about this on Thursday, Dan. He said, hey, uh, Asante, if he was in the right position on that play, he wouldn't have made the interception. So th- this award doesn't really change how we feel about Asante. We love Asante. I'm, I'm paraphrasing what Brandon Stanley said. But he wasn't even in the right position for that play to get the interception. So – uh, he's basically just saying the illusion of the NFL, like don't read your own headlines, right? Like you, you had a great month. Um, this is your first three games in, in the league, but there's a long way to go. And it doesn't get any easier when you talk about this passing attack led by Derek Carr, who leads the NFL in passing right now and is spreading the ball around to a lot of different guys, four different receivers, Dan, have over 200 yards receiving. So it, this is going to be quite the test. I mean, it doesn't get any easier. You talk about Art Kelsey. Tyree Kill and company. Now you go to the Vegas Raiders, who, who they're humming right now on office. You mentioned the Raiders. So let's talk about momentum. I mean, the Chargers are 2-1. and one, Raiders are 3-0. Oh, prime time event on Monday. Uh, Raiders look good early on. I think Derek Carr has the most passing yards in the NFL. Their offense is humming. I think it's the top passing offense in the league. You mentioned they spread it around. They got a bunch of playmakers. Like, What is it about the offense that you think has been so hard for defenses to be able to kind of figure out? From the Raiders' perspective, yeah, uh, yeah, I, I would say the, the emergence of Henry Ruggs and, and that speed. Um, they, they have just different guys who who can do different things, man. Like Darren Waller, uh, <laughs> one of the best tight ends in football. You got Hunter Renfro, um, who just makes plays. I mean, just plain and simple, he makes plays. Aside, they Samuel said he he played Renfro in college and, and Clemson. Obviously, got the best of Florida State. Uh, Brian Edwards, another young player who, who's impressive. Um, and then, you know, what Ruggs has been doing. Um, it, I, I encourage you guys to check out the film room I did with Daniel Jeremiah. He kind of breaks down that connection between Carr and Ruggs of what the Chargers are going to have to look out for on Monday night. So, you know, Carr's always been a guy who, who could throw the ball around the yard. But, you know, uh, Brandon Staley said they have, a, they have a complete offense right now. And even without Josh Jacobs, guys like Drake and, and Peyton Barber, in the backfield, there's just a lot to account for. And the Chargers are going to have to play a really clean game on defense and, um, you know, not miss any assignments and and try to get turnovers like they did Sunday at Arrowhead. Speaking of Chargers defense, I think folks talked about it all offseason. You know, we can't wait to see the potential of a Derwin James and Joey Bosa playing together on the field. You got Drew Tranquil now healthy, Asante Samuel, 
you know, Brandon Staley, Ronaldo Hills defense, you know, all kinds of stuff about this new defense. We're trying to figure out like, what would it look like? Now we have Nazir Adderley getting into a groove. Like what have you seen for the defense that has impressed you most? And is there something that you think that they need to work on most in order to kind of take it to that next level? Well, I think the biggest thing they need to, it's not so much work on, it's just getting guys back, like getting Justin Jones back, right? I, I think Justin Jones is really going to work wonders in terms of run defense and, and having an extra body in there on the defensive line. Um, I, I, I love what I, I've seen from guys like Joey and Derwin, who, you know, Joey wasn't 100% last week, and um, he was able to just wreak havoc Warrior. still on, on Patrick Mahomes. And, and, you know, Derwin coming in with the shoulder injury and, and going back in, uh, before the half, um, you, you're seeing your your blue chip players kind of play through some stuff, which I thought, uh, you know, it, it's it, it shows the rest of the team like, hey, we're doing it. You got to do it, too. Um, and, and then you're just seeing young guys, Dan, like I mentioned, Tavon Campbell and Asante Samuel, um, you know, guys like Kenneth Murray and Michael Davis. You know, Brandon Silly said this on Thursday. They're at the beginning of this program with, with these coaches in this system. So it's only going to go up from here. And, you know, we're, we're in week three. I think guys are just really starting to get things. Um, Nazir Adderley, the way he played uh, in Arrowhead uh, alongside Derwin James, um, to get those types of performances, I thought Drew Tranquil, man, coming off the bench and just providing an, an unbelievable spark at the linebacker yeah. position. Uh, I think that rotation of him, Kaiser, and Kenneth, uh, that's going to be a benefit to the team uh, moving forward. We're talking to Chris Harry, Chargers team reporter. Now, Chris, we saw last week the, the Chargers defensive game plan was kind of executed perfectly against the Chiefs. How do you see the game plan going up against the Raiders? Like, what do you see as kind of the keys for the Chargers defense to be able to not necessarily stop the Raiders and Derek Carr, but maybe just like contain and blanket enough to where we could score enough to beat them? I think you just have to be, you have to be opportunistic on defense. You have to try to get the football. And, you know, that, that kind of goes without saying every single week. But uh, avoiding the big plays, you know, they, they were able to keep Tyree Hill in front of them. Um, you know, they, they kind of got out of Arrowhead without Travis Kelsey, like, just having this monster game. He had 100 yards. I mean, but he's one of the best receivers in football. So I think keeping things in front of you, not giving up, a big play because they have guys who can make big plays. I mentioned Henry Ruggs. I mean, that guy can run by anybody in, in the NFL. So I, I think it's blown assignments and, and trying to get the football. I mean, I, those are the two big things that I think the Chargers are just going to have to continue to do. And I think they've been pretty sound. I mean, you just look at the first few weeks of the season, Dan, I mean, they've given up some yards, they've given up some yards on the ground, but you know, their, their opponents haven't done all that money. I mean, Dallas had 17 points. You know, I was just talking to money about this uh, on our podcast. You know, Dallas had 17 points until that, that game winning field goal. Uh, Washington, th they kept in check for the most part. And to to do what they did against the, the Chiefs, especially in that first half. I mean, I, I think this defense is showing us what they eventually can be. And, and really, in, in some ways, they're already kind of there. So, uh but it just doesn't get any easier. And, and this is this, this division, you know, um, the Raiders are, are a really, really complete offense, as Coach Staley said. And um, you have to account for a lot of different dudes. We're wrapping up with Chargers team reporter Chris Harry. Now, Chargers offense seemed to hit its stride in Arrowhead last week. You mentioned Mike Williams, Justin Herbert, Keenan Allen. They're all incredible early on. How, how close do you think we are to seeing like the full potential of this offense like are we there yet or is there a long way to go i don't necessarily think there's a long way to go i, I thought that they made strides from weeks one and two to, to three though you know especially in the red zone going three of ten in the red zone in weeks one and two and then going four or five in the Huge. red zone i'd say that's that's progress so uh it, it's still going to take some time i mean this is a this is a massive playbook in a, a new offensive system and and these guys are running it for the first time but I tell you this, Joe Lombardi wasn't lying when he said expect big numbers from Mike Williams, and uh, I, I just don't. We didn't see this consistently um, from Mike uh, in the past, and if, if we're going to get elite wide receiver play out of Mike Williams, and we know we're going to get elite wide receiver play out of Keenan Allen, if Justin can lean on and trust those guys week in and week out, there is so much you can do 
with this offense if you know you have two elite guys at the wide receiver position and they're on the field at the same time. So I, I still think it's going to take some time for the offense to reach its full potential, obviously, because, you know, you only score 20 points and 17 points in weeks one and two, and um, you, you leave some some points out on the field. But like I said, red zone offense uh, dramatically improved in week three. And we'll see what what's going to happen in week four and beyond because you have a a pretty tough stretch after the Raiders too. You've got the the Browns come in with that running attack. You have the Ravens on the road, then a bye. You know we don't necessarily know what the Patriots are right now, but they are the New England Patriots. So uh, there, there's some tough AFC games coming up, but you can't look too far down the road. Monday night is uh, is the main focus. And speaking of Mike Williams, just for a second, a lot of people are talking about his performance and how different he is now versus years past. And a lot of the issues that people had or that he had was just simply just staying on the field and, and health. And you're seeing him utilize very differently this year. You're not seeing nearly as much way down the field, chuck it 80, 20 balls like we're accustomed to seeing and him having the chance to get hurt. You're seeing a lot more short intermediate routes and him being able to just churn plays. Is it a matter of just him being healthy or do you see like a different scheme that they have drawn up for him that has made him more successful? Yeah, I mean, they're definitely using him differently. And, and you know, week one, he set a career high in catches with eight, you know, so that, that that's pretty telling. Right. Uh, but I think that it's a combination of both. It, it's health and, you know, this ex receiver position that Joe Lombardi talked about this offseason and his his hopes for Mike and uh, what he could potentially do in, in this new offensive scheme. And we're, we're seeing it. Listen, this guy was drafted number seven overall um, with this in mind. Um, and, and to have a, a, a quarterback like Justin Herbert um, to be able to to get on the same page. Like w- we saw Justin get on the same page immediately with Keenan Allen last year. Now we're starting to see that with Mike. And uh, it's it's listen, I tell you this, if, if they can keep it up and stay healthy, health is the number one thing that, that offense is going to be pretty difficult to stop. It is. We'll get you out of here on this one, Chris. Uh, Raiders coming into town, coming into SoFi. Division rivals always seem to go down to the wire, always electric atmosphere. Is this just going to be another one of those, like, who has the ball last wins kind of game? Like, how do you see the two teams matching up? Like, how do you see this kind of playing out? It's a great question. Um, I have no idea. I'll just be honest (laughs) with you. I have absolutely zero clue. But if we're going off past performances, uh, it could be. It could be the fourth quarter that, that it comes down to. But, you know, I do think the Chargers defense is going to be up for this challenge. And and you just wonder if, if there's a game coming here where Justin really starts to hit his stride and it, it doesn't have to come down to the last position or the last quarter. I don't know what to, you know, this is the thing. I, I remember Kevin Harlan telling me this a few years ago, like you always have to throw September football out the window, right? Because it, guys are just getting used to, playing again you know yeah. tackling's a little sloppier um it, it, it's not as crisp as it's going to be in october and november and then you know if you could just stack wins in september and if you're a good team and you already stack wins in september you're playing with house money at that point you know so sometimes it, it may be like okay we're one and two we're one and three but we're going to get there if you can just find ways to win in september uh, and this is what I, I love the fact that they already got the chiefs under the belt, the Chargers. If, if they can get big the one. Chiefs and the Raiders in September, uh, we know they're at the beginning of this movie, right? As Staley likes to say, they're at the beginning of this thing. It, they're going to be a, a different team in October and November. So stack wins in September. Um, I'm going to say that it, it, it doesn't come down to the last possession, and then we'll just see what happens. There we go. There we go. Chris Harry, Chargers team reporter, host and co-host of – Many Chargers podcasts. You see him on CBS LA. Chris, thank you so much for joining us on the show. Where can find where can people find the beautiful work that you do with your team? No, I appreciate it, man. Um, the Chargers Podcast Network. We have a we have a great one coming out on Friday morning with uh, me and Matt Money Smith. Uh, I talked to Omar Ruiz of NFL Network, who's going to be on NFL Network's uh, post game coverage on Monday night, and uh, ESPN Steve Levy going to join us too to break Love down Steve. the matchup so excited about that and then, and then Haley has playmakers coming out I believe Laura Rutledge of ESPN going to join her there so we got some good stuff uh cooking this weekend and uh yeah just uh find us on the Chargers podcast network and you know we got stuff cooking on Chargers.com all the time 
There you go. We can find Chris Harry at Chris Harry on Twitter. Chris, thank you so much for joining us. Have fun this weekend, and let's go Chargers Monday night. We'll see you so far. All right, Dan. Appreciate it, buddy. All right, see ya. Well, that's going to wrap things up for today's episode of Chargers Unleashed. Again, special shout-out and thank you to Chris Harry, Chargers team reporter, for joining us to talk a little bit about this Chargers matchup ahead with the Las Vegas Raiders. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at LAC underscore Unleashed. If you have not already, give us a quick like and a follow and subscribe everywhere you find your podcast as well as on YouTube. For those coming in for the first time and second time and all the times beyond, thank you so much. We appreciate you tuning in. And we'll talk to you next time on Chargers Unleashed. You have to be really intentional about putting a team in. Crawl out of the pile and start screaming.